From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pete Codley, Johnny. Guaranteed transport. Oh, hiya, Pete. Seen the papers? No, I just got up. Why? What's happened? Air crash, for one thing. Air crash? Where? Mexico. Flight 6, Aztec Caribbean line, Mexico City to Havana. Crashed in the mountains ten minutes after takeoff. Seven passengers and a crew of three. Survivors? The way it sounds, none. Oh, tough. How do you come into it, Pete? We underwrite a company that handles flight insurance down there. Three of the passengers bought policies at the airport. We're stuck for $75,000. This is a nice time of the year in Mexico, Johnny. What do you want me to do? Find out why it crashed? No, I know why it crashed. Somebody meant for it to. What do you mean? That plane blew up in midair. I'll get you a reservation. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Guaranteed Transport Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Flight 6 matter. Item 1, $173.20, airline fare and incidentals, Hartford, Connecticut to Mexico City. I checked my baggage through customs and started making inquiries, and more inquiries, and then some more. And after the 14th Ken Sabe, maybe is better you ask him, I found the office I was looking for. Or at least I thought I'd found it. The flowery Spanish title on the door translated roughly into Inspector General of the Department of Civil Air Transport. But when I opened the door, I wasn't so sure. Come in, Jack. Make yourself to home. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for the... I found him. That's me. Don't let the big words on the door fool you. I'm all there is. There ain't no more. So come in. Shut the door. All right, thanks. (laughs) Is uh, your name uh, Dollar? That's right, Johnny Dollar. Macklin here. Mac Macklin. One time mongrel from the south side of Chicago. I got a wire from your office. Said you'd be in on Pan Am Flight 12. Pull up a chair and squat, will you? All right. Or what were you expecting? (laughs) <laughs> Spanish grandee with a white silk shirt, a black silk tie, and a second cousin on the cabinet? Well, maybe. At least I wasn't figuring on a south side mick with a 17th century desk and a cotton sweatshirt. Uh, well, now, here's what little dope we've got on the crash. Most of it you probably know already. I left on 20-minute notice. All I've seen is one newspaper item. I can use a lot more. Well, you won't get much more out of that report. We got a crew over at the wreckage around two hours ago. Survivors? No, he didn't have a chance. That crate is scattered over ten acres of mountainside. Didn't catch fire, though, so we might turn up something or other. Oh, I've got a good man in charge up there, Juno Romero. You'll meet him later. I'm sending another jeep up there in a few minutes, and you can go along if you want. Thanks, I will. My company figures sabotage. Any chance they're wrong? Could it have been accidental? Equipment failure, personnel failure, something like that? Well, if I thought so, I'd be up there at the wreck myself. That'd be my kind of job, but this one's different. You know, it's detective work, your kind of job. And Gino Romero's. Now, he talks as soft as a girl out of finishing school. Looks a little like one, in fact. But underneath it, he's as sharp as a tack and tougher than an old boot full of nails. What actually happened when the plane went down? All I've heard is that it blew up in midair. That's right. Well, a few Indians were on the only ones who saw it. They were burning charcoal up on a slope at about 9,000 feet. They were watching the plane circle, gaining altitude. Then one big flash, the tail blew off. Pilot didn't have a chance. He rode it straight into the side of the mountain. The tail? That sounds like the baggage compartment. That's the way I figure it. An explosive of some kind. A time bomb smuggled on board before the takeoff. I'm covering that angle from this end. I'm rounding up every one of the baggage gang, the maintenance crew, anybody who had a chance to get near that plane before it left the field out there. And what have you found out? Well, so far, nothing. We're trying to check back, too, on the individual passengers, the plane crew, trying to find out... Who might benefit by having any one of them dead? Well, I guess that'll be your angle, too. Yeah. Yeah, at least as far as insurance is concerned. Well, there were three flight policies issued, and the names are in the reports here. Yeah, I know. I've got them. The home office gave them to me, along with the names of the beneficiaries. I haven't talked to any of them yet. I figured that you know how to go about it better than I would. There's another possible insurance angle, and that's the cargo. 
Do you know if there was anything valuable on board? Worth destroying for the insurance, you mean? No, it was done by somebody who deliberately set out to kill one of the ten people on board that plane. And who didn't mind killing nine others to get that one? It was premeditated, cold-blooded. Now, you get him, Johnny. Get him for me, and then just leave me alone with him for about... Uh... Come in. One of you is Senor McLean, Inspector General de Departamento Civil. Yes, that, that's me. What can I do for you, Jack? They will not give to me any information, Senor McLean. Not the police, nor the airline office, nor oh, anything. Who are you? And what information do you want? I am Ramon de Lagos, Senor, and I am here... De Lagos? Wait a minute. That's the name of one of the... Yes. Guys. Look, uh, are you related to Maria de Lagos? My wife. She was on the plane. Now tell me, please, what news do you have? Have you reached the scene of the crash? Yes, we have. Two hours ago. And what did you... Is there any chance... I'm sorry, there were no survivors. No. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry, Senor de Lagos. It is too terrible. Said I, I didn't know you were here in the city, or I'd have, I'd have let you know right away. I sent word to your office in Havana. I, I have been here for six weeks... Maria came for a visit only a few days ago. No. I know, that's, that's a rough deal. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, uh, this is Johnny Dollar from the States. Senor. Later, sir. He's here to investigate the cause of this thing. What is the use, senor? It will not return life to the dead. No, but I don't like to see a murderer get away with it. A murderer? Then the rumors are true. The plane was destroyed deliberately. It is hard to believe that anyone would... Senor McLean, what arrangements are being made? The, uh, the bodies will be brought down to the Federal District Hospital. And I'll see that you're notified. Gracias, senor. No, no, let's see. I, I believe your wife's brother, Don Serrano, is staying at the Hotel Regis. Yes, he is. But I am at the Monte Cassino. Don Serrano and I are not friendly. I see. All right, senor, then I'll contact you at the Monte Cassino as soon as I have word. You are very kind. And again, I'm... Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry. I... Yes, that is all one can say. Adios, senores. You know anything about him, Mac? Well, only what his wife filled out on the flight form. He's Cuban. Residence in business address, Havana. In the export game. And you know, of course, that his wife was one of the three people who took out accident policies. But naming her brother, Don Serrano, as beneficiary... I wonder why. Well, that's one of the six dozen questions you can ask when you start prowling. Look, I hate to rush you, Johnny, but I ought to start that jeep up the mountain. I'm ready any time. I'll let Gino know you're coming. You check with me if you want anything. You'll have full cooperation from the federal police and the government. And to repeat just one thing, Johnny. Yeah, I know. Whoever did it, get them. Check. The jeep driver was a young Mexican boy who'd been brought up in the best and wildest chauffeuring traditions of the capital. He knew only one way to drive, with both accelerator and horn wide open. Since most of the other drivers were playing the same game, it was a sheer miracle that we ever got through the narrow streets of the city and finally reached the open valley. Maybe the colored postcard pasted on the dashboard, a picture of the Virgin of Guadalupe, had something to do with it. We finally left the last cart road and bumped along a narrow woodcutter's trail cleared and widened enough now so that we could drive into the crash area and miss the mile and a half walk the first rescue party had been forced to take. For some reason, only a small part of the wreckage had caught fire and burned, and the rest was strewn piecemeal along a great raw gash through the trees and brush. Men in uniforms of the Mexican army searched through the tragic debris, lifting, sorting, and collecting. And nearby, a silent group of Indians were watching with the age-old sadness in their eyes. You are uh, Senor Dollar, no? Yes. Uh, Gino Romero, Senor. Oh, glad to know you, Gino. It's a terrible thing, no? Yeah. Any ideas yet? Uh, not of importance, but it's certain now this. It was caused by one explosion which has occurred in the baggage compartimento. Uh, venga, uh, Come on. We have found many pieces which can be identified, uh, can be known which part of the plane they are in before the crash. I see. Toward the front, these pieces are more large, but in the back, near the tail, they are very little. Oh, here, uh, you look. These are pieces of the baggage, uh, muy pequeño, hmm? uh, very tiny. 
Oh, yeah. The crash itself wouldn't have done this. It had to be an explosion. Seguro. Uh, look, it's burnt a little, each one of these pieces, but these more big ones from the seats of the plane, they are not burnt. Uh, here, uh, you smell these ones. Hmm? Yeah, I see what you mean. Either dynamite or nitroglycerin. Or dynamite. We have found little tiny pieces of red paper from the wrappings on the sticks. Was dynamite. Any idea how much? How big a charge? One of the soldados, uh, Pascual, who have used much explosive, is think maybe 30 or 40 pounds. Light enough to be put on board in a piece of luggage. It's going to be tough, Gino. Plenty tough to... They're bringing out the bodies. The Indians set up a low, wailing dirge. And one of them taps softly on a native drum. A wordless terror before the ancient mystery, death. One by one, the bodies passed us, borne by the silent soldiers. Madre de Dios, may they find peace. Then, for the first time, I noticed the girl, standing alone some distance away, watching without expression as the stretches passed her. She was young, blonde, and beautiful. Not conventionally so, but beautiful as a young animal is beautiful. And she looked very much out of place. You are observing the senorita, no? What's she doing up here? Quien sabe? She's strange, that one. Always she's look for danger. She's what you say, um, the, the daredevil. But it's like she always have the charm. Death has never find her. So perhaps she has come here to look on his face. Do you know who she is? We well, see. She's American. Her name is Marvel Terrence. Marvel Terrence? You have heard of her, senor? I'd heard of her all right. And I'd wondered what kind of a girl would have a first name like Marvel. And now I knew, partly at least. And I planned to find out a whole lot more. Three of the people who died on that plane had taken out flight policies. Maria de Lagos was one of them. The other two were men. Both of whom had named as beneficiary Marvel Terrence. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a fighting girl and a lucky break. And then murder cancels the score. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 